Hi, my name is Gabby and I'm with Violet TV today. Um, it was Mental Health Awareness Week last week and off the back of that, we will be talking to Helen Barber today um, who wrote the book The A to Z of Normal. How are you doing today, Helen? Hi, I'm doing very well, thank you, Gabby. Nice to be here. Excellent. Lovely to have you. Lovely to have you. So, I mean, what was the inspiration for the A to Z of normal? Okay, so the inspiration was my own experience of living with various mental health issues, the chief one being obsessive compulsive disorder, which most people will know by its abbreviation of OCD, uh, and also perfectionism and generalised anxiety disorder, which again people will more commonly know as anxiety. Um, I've given my protagonist Claire OCD, uh, very mean of me I know. Um, I really felt, I've, I've written for a long time and people always say write about what you know, mm. um, often people don't of course, but uh, you don't write about serial killers because you're a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, I think that's a good mantra and I felt that for me it was a, uh, an experience that was, that was unique to me, you know, I, I had this experience of OCD that I really wanted to share, there's a lot of stigma still around mental health and I really wanted to raise awareness and understanding but to do it in a, a very entertaining way, you know, this is a, this is a fictional book, there's humour in it uh, and I really wanted to get that across. Yeah. Do you just want to fill anybody who's listening in on about your story, so what, what's the book about? Okay, so the book is about uh, Claire Thorpe, who's a woman in her early 30s, who has OCD, and uh, that's triggered by some early life events. Uh, OCD is often, can often be triggered by life events. Mm -hmm. Doctors don't know what causes it exactly, but it can be genetic, it can be um, life events, there's a whole combination of factors. And for sure. Claire, there was one key event uh, which, which really set her off. And uh, the book begins with a marriage proposal from her boyfriend, long distance boyfriend. Mm -hmm. So I'm not giving that, it's not a spoiler alert, that happens on page one. <laughs> yeah. um, and Claire then, he's long distance, and, and so Claire's managed to hide her problems with OCD. And so the book is about her uh, struggle to try and deal with her compulsions so that they can have a future together because she, uh, her compulsions mean she can't share her space with anyone. It's all about ordering and symmetry, and she can't live with someone else. So. It, the book is about her tackling that and also dealing with a, quite a dysfunctional family setup, mm. a lot of which arises from that early um, incident which sort of triggered her OCD. Bearing in mind that it was Mental Health Awareness Week last mm -hmm. week, and I think it's actually Mental Health Awareness Month. Oh, well, you know better than me, perhaps well, it is. Okay. <laughs> so, was there, is there anything in mind um, that made you write the book? Uh, was it surrounding a specific occasion, or did you just think? Well, actually, what this what? Time? Yeah, what? But yes, well, it's interesting you say that because um, loads of people say they want to write a book. Lots of people who aren't even writers say they want to write a book. But it's a really daunting thing to do. You know, yeah. it's very hard work. It takes a lot of dedication and sacrifices to do it. And so lots of people like me put it off. Uh, however, very sadly, um, a friend of mine um, was diagnosed with terminal cancer, oh. and. Her diagnosis was very sad, and in the middle of that sort of sadness and grief, knowing I was going to lose her, mm. uh, I thought, if I were in that position, if I were the one with a terminal illness, what would I regret not doing? And I mm. thought, I want, I know this sounds very a bit morbid, but I want on my deathbed to say, I, ha I wrote that novel, I did yeah. write that novel, I, I did do it. Mm. With the book itself, obviously it is surrounding OCD, um, but did the process of writing the book um, highlight to you any sort of... Um, Men anything about mental health or OCD that you weren't aware of? Uh, well, I was, I was fairly well read on the subject. I've been looking into it. I've read a lot of books, watched a lot of documentaries, uh, gone to conferences. So I was fairly well uh, versed about OCD. Um, I also write a blog, which actually that has been really interesting because it's been a very reflective process and I've realised actually I have a whole lot of other syndromes as well. <laughs> it's not just typing your symptoms into yeah, Google? Yeah, maybe, but you can't, something that you think is just you being, uh, there's something called misophonia, which is an intolerance of certain kinds of sounds and I thought that was just a sign. Okay. I was an impatient person. Actually, it turns out it is a neurological condition. Oh. So that's been really interesting and I, I have actually put... Uh, Claire goes to a support group at one point in the novel, or at several points she makes uh, return visits, and I needed to give those people some other, I wanted to give them some other um, sort of manifestations of OCD sure. and related disorders, so we do have yeah. someone with uh, hair pulling, which is called trichotillomania, and uh, there's a chap there with tics as well, which often you'll see in people with Tourette's. Mm. So 
I did explore those, the novel sort of made me, in a good way, made me explore some of these other issues and syndromes, mm. just so I could, you know, make the other characters a bit more diverse. We didn't want them all to have the same. The same and OCD yeah. is very different anyway. I mean, sure. a lot of people, Claire has ordering, OCD around ordering and symmetry, which is what I have. Most people will think of cleaning and washing, mm, stereoty like washing stereotypically, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's a very varied condition, and there's a bit of overlap. I do have some contamination issues. Yeah, that's not my main thing, but yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a very complex condition, and I wanted to, those characters to reflect the different elements of it. Right. Do you want to explain <laughs> the significance of uh, the title, the A to Z of normal? Yeah, sure. I mean, it sort of goes back in a way to what we were just saying, the fact that there are uh, so many different mental health experiences people can have and actually uh, it also touches on the fact that for me I don't think anyone is normal I don't there's no that's such what thing about yeah the book there's title. no such thing yeah. as normal uh, and I think we've all got our issues whatever it might be and some of these issues have names and they recognize mental health conditions and others are just issues mm. I don't know let's say you've been let down in a relationship someone has cheated on you and it makes you have trust issues mm. and your whole behavior is governed by that mm. and maybe you behave strangely because of that you know you might sabotage relationships because of that that hasn't got that's not a mental health condition as no. anyone recognizes it um, but for me that is just can potentially look just as abnormal you know to someone who isn't hasn't gone through that do you think that it's a good thing for more and more people to name and identify the conditions that they may have, regardless of the mm. severity? I think it can be a bit of a double-edged sword. I think, as I've found through writing my blog and finding I have all these other syndromes, you can start to think, oh, I'm just a bucket load of mess here. <laughs> Is there anything even remotely normal about me? Uh, it can be a bad thing, but I think it can be a very good thing because you realise you're not alone. Oh, it sure. does have a name, you know, like the misophonia. I thought it was just me being impatient. Now I've realised it's actually something in, it, about the wiring in my brain that just makes it hard just for me to tolerate certain right. kind of, you know, tapping noises or people clicking pens. Okay. And and so I think, gosh, it's not, it isn't just me. Right. Um, yeah, sure. Yeah. I didn't realise that you had a blog, so oh, I'm, right, I'm okay. interested <laughs> to know when did when did you start that? Up? So I started that just over three years ago. It's called the Reluctant Perfectionist. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I did it weekly up until. Uh, April of this year when I decided just to just to ease up a little bit on that because mm. I wanted to break into some other areas and do talks and things um, sure. and, and work on sort of promoting my novel but um, yeah so the blog it covers it covers not just the conditions I've already described but uh, sort of general mental health topics as they come up you know things like for example Robin Williams suicide mm. that prompted a blog post yeah, you know sure. so I try and keep an eye on what's going on and what things are currently being discussed. Mm. What do you hope that your readers will take from Claire's story? Yeah, I mean, I hope they'll get a better understanding of OCD and and mental health generally. And the fact, I think what's a really um, key thing for me is how, how secret a lot of mental health conditions mm -hmm. can be. And Claire's kept it secret and eventually has to open up about it. But I think just raising awareness that lots of people are struggling quietly on their own and that's why I think raising awareness and talking about different conditions and, and telling people there's help available is really important. Yeah. For sure. And of course in some cultures as well, you know, things like mental health are very taboo. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So it's really important to raise awareness across the spectrum really. Mm. Do you think that mental health is um, something constructed by a Western culture? Oh, well we're perhaps more I don't think it's constructed. I think, oh, I don't know, you see, because you d you've got to wonder some of our issues, you know, maybe they do arise from the way we live. Mm. Um, you know, you wonder if, if yeah, someone who's existent, ex existing, you know, in a tribe and it's subsistence existence, have they got time to... Even think, reflect yeah, about... Yeah, no, I mean, it's an interesting idea. Thing. I haven't thought about that. I should go away and think about <laughs> that one. Do you think that it's ever easy for an individual to uh, be considerate of their partner's mental health state? Seeing as it was Mental Health Awareness Week <laughs> and they did have the theme of relationships, mm, they do. which is obviously a big part of, of your book. Mm. Um, so that's why I asked the question. I mean, I think it's incredibly hard because it's incredibly hard even for another person with OCD to necessarily understand, and I'm just talking about the one condition, it's in, very hard to understand another person's compulsions because they're also different. Mm. Um, and a lot of OCD is about what feels right. So it's a sort of gut thing, really. And right. so it's very hard to explain to anyone and you know if you have someone as my partner is who's just gen generally a very considerate person so he'll know when we're on holiday and I'll say look I just need 
I just need a few minutes to sort of unpack my suitcase and make my nest, mm. make my little home. Um, so I think as long as someone can be considerate and support you in seeking treatment, right, uh, and try not to enable you. <laughs> well, there was mention of like enabling mm. and things like that in the book. Um, at one point, Claire um, seeks self-help from mm. a book. Mm. Is do you think that seeking help in that sort of way through like a self-help book? Do you think that's um, an effective? form of like recovery or well I think it's probably a starting point mm. um, but you know like all things it takes a huge amount of effort and willpower it's very very you know the treatment for OCD means it essentially it's called exposure response and response prevention ERP and it means resisting your compulsions and that will induce anxiety naturally because yeah, of course. and you have to ride out that anxiety and keep doing exposures so I think so because it's so very hard unless you're incredibly disciplined um, I think it's quite hard to do without some form of feeding back. So maybe that's in, uh, going to a support group or having a therapist. Mm. But of course, it, it is difficult. The resourcing isn't really there. Mm. You know, and it can take a long time to get help. And maybe mm. you need some, there's something called cognitive behaviour therapy, which is CBT. And that's the recognised treatment. But people might get sent to a group setting to do that rather than one to one, one, to one therapy. Yeah. And so, you know, maybe there just isn't, if there isn't the support out there, the self help books, I think, certainly can be a good a good uh, way of supporting your treatment. So I think, I think there is certainly for me, I think, there's, I think it's beneficial for me to have somebody I'm sort of accountable to perhaps, sure. apart from just myself. Because yeah. <laughs> it's, it's difficult to, to, you know, to do I it on your own, I think. Exactly. With any sort of mental health problems, I do think that a strong support group mm. is one of the things, one of the most vital things that you could possibly mm. have in order to help you get better. Yeah. And, so, and Claire ends up, I mean, Claire has had, in the book, Claire has had treatment before but lapsed. So she's had some therapy and then she goes to a support group because for her, yes, she hasn't got, the self-help book isn't quite no. the push that she And her she family needs. is not exactly no, the supporting no, her, so no. there's all those... And she hasn't opened up to them, so they're no, no, so... <laughs> Literally, like, you would just be stuck on stuff yeah, by yourself. Yeah. And it's hard to stay motivated yes, and yeah, you have to yeah. do everything on your yourself. own. Mm. 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 Um, so is there, are there any plans to write a sequel? It's obviously, it's called the A to Z yeah. of normal. You've only covered O, so we're like, what's next? <laughs> oh no, don't. You know, one day, I'd, I did one day sit down and thought, I'm going to write a whole A to Z of all the mental health conditions. Oh, wow. But it's quite, I think there are quite a lot of Bs and there are quite a lot of certain letters, but some, <laughs> <Nothing>. <laughs> I think unless you start getting into the phobias, but and then you right, can. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I mean, a few people who've read the book have said they want to know more about Claire and her family. Some people have said they want to hear a story from her sister, who oh, features yeah. in the book. Of course, the thing with doing a sequel is, if you do a sequel, your audience tends to be, they then need to have read the first book, and it can be a bit off-putting for readers, I think, to have a okay. sequel, that's, unless it's a complete standalone in book, right. which you can mm. do. I mean, Marion Keyes does that very successfully. You know, she's written a series of books about different sisters, and actually you can read each of them on their own oh, right. without necessarily having read the other mm. ones. So you can do it as a standalone book. Um, at the moment, I'm, I'm doing talks and you know, I'm doing interviews like this and, and promoting the first one. Uh, I have thought about doing instead of that there was another idea I had for a book um, about transvestitism transvestitism I can never say that word transvestitism, transvestitism. <laughs> I don't know how many isms there are in that um, but but unlike OCD it's not so it was just something that caught my eye I watched a documentary and mm. I thought that would be interesting to explore but as I know nothing about it that takes a lot of, oh, a lot of research because you need to be very well informed and get to get sure. those things right. Alternatively, I'm thinking about doing some short stories as offshoots of the novel. So taking some characters from the novel oh, and exploring like from the support. Group. Yeah, from the support group exactly. Mm. From the support group. Yeah, there's a few characters there. I think I've already thought of a couple who could interact outside and um, be really good. yeah, and do some short stories and maybe bring that out as an anthology. How, so. how have you found the whole promoting? Is this the first book you've written? Yes. Yeah. 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 So how's the yeah. promotion I mean, the, side of things? I mean, I enjoy the promotion side. It's it's a lot of work, but I enjoy it. I think a lot of writers don't. Um, mm. They want to just put their head down and write. And of course, there is that difficulty. I mean, one of the reasons I haven't written anything else yet is because I'm doing this, it's you know. Yeah. And there are, and I work as well. And so <laughs> there are only so many t hours in the day, uh, and it's difficult to do it all. But I mean, I enjoy the promotion, it and and I did want to get the story out there and not have it just stuck in a drawer, mm. you know. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying doing all this and talking to people about mental health, and uh, yeah.
Yeah. yeah. And it's not, it's not my story. I wasn't getting my story across. It's not my story. Claire's story is not my story. She's very different to me and her sure. experiences and her family and everything's very different. But, but her mental health story. Is yeah. one that you is can mine. Really yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, this is this is the way that mental health will only become something that people are more comfortable with, um, talking about mm. and expressing. Um, is is when conversations like these mm. happen, and when books like yours are written, mm. and you know people have put themselves out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, hope so. I hope so. Thank so. you for sharing. Onwards and upward. Well, thank you for having me. Absolutely. It's been great to talk to you. Thank oh, you. it's been wonderful. Okay, this is Gabby for Barnet TV. Sign it up. <laughs>